teachers of the CMR Law School and the dear students. Now, when we celebrate the 75th year of independence, that is Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, naturally we have to remember the great freedom fighters of this country. Now, when we remember the freedom fighters for this country who won us independence, naturally we remember the father of the nation, Mahatma Gandhi. Now, father of the nation, Mahatma Gandhi, was like any one of us when he was young. And I just intend to speak to you from uh, his autobiography, My Experiments with the Truth. And the autobiography which was written by him clearly points out what type of a personality he was, what inspired him, and in which principles he had the greatest faith, and how these principles had helped him at a later stage during the course of the freedom movement of the state of India. Now, many people, uh, when Mahatma Gandhi uh, came to this country, and participated in the freedom movement, pressed him to write his autobiography. But then the initial stages, he was not interested. He was not interested because autobiography is generally written by Western scholars and Western writers and Western eminent men. And it is not the habit or the culture of the Eastern uh, statesmen to write one's own biography and put it as autobiography on the man. But then there were lots of people who insisted and pressurized the great Mahatma to write his autobiography. Now with the result, remember, in the, in the 1924-23-24, he thought of writing it. And when he was thought of writing it, remember, suddenly he was uh, brought back to the freedom struggle. And when he was brought back to the freedom struggle, he was arrested and he was put in the Erwada jail. When he was put in the Erwada jail, most of his uh, well-wishers said, now this is the right time for you to write an autobiography about yourself. So at that time, in 1924, he thought of writing an autobiography of himself. And the first volume was uh, prepared and it was complete. And at that time, he was again released uh, from the jail. And when he was released from the jail, he bounced back again into the freedom struggle. With the result, the writing work stopped and it remained where it was. So, again, when he found free time, he was able to complete the second volume. So, hence the autobiography of Mahatma Gandhi. The first volume was published in the year 1927. And the second volume, volume was published in the year 1929. So, the first and the second volume at a later stage was printed in one volume in Gujarati. So the original writing of Mahatma Gandhi's autobiography was in Gujarati and at a later stage it was translated by eminent men into English. Now what exactly, remember his parentage and the people who were uh, his ancestors. When we speak over, about his ancestors, naturally we remember uh, his one of his grandfathers happened to be Uttam Chand Gandhi. Uttam Chand Gandhi happened to be a Diwan or the Prime Minister in Borbandar. And this person, because he was a very hard-hearted uh, man, very strong enough, had plenty of moral views and he tried to impose these things on uh, several others as well. As a result, he was not in a position to get on at Borbandar as the Prime Minister and he moved to another place, uh, uh, Junagad. And in Junagad, he serves under Sultan. Again, he served as the Diwan. Now, Uttam Chand Gandhi had two wives. He married twice. And from the first wife, he had four children, four sons. And from the second wife, he had two uh, children, four, two sons. So all of them are male children. For the first, it was four. And the second, it was two. And the fifth one happened to be Karam Chand Gandhi was born to the second wife. And the other person happened to be the last one, the sixth one happened to be Tulsi Gandhi. Now, Karamchand Gandhi, that is, that is uh, Gandhi's father, Gandhi's father had married four times. 
and he had married four times and from the first two wives he had two daughters and the third wife did not have any, any issues and but with the fourth again he had what we call as three three uh, three sons and a daughter and the last one happened to be uh, our mahatma gandhi mohandas karamchand gandhi now you may ask me why marriages used to take place like this in those days remember because of the diseases because of the uh, famine and the pestilence many people would die at a young age so in situations like this remember although although they used to say marriages are made in heaven they would not last at the time of the betrothal ceremony they would leave but then at the time of marriage they were no more that is the reason they had to marry uh, 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 twice or thrice or four times in the as the case uh, uh, which we have uh, here which you are hearing now when we come to mahatma gandhi mahatma gandhi was born and he was born on uh, in the year 1869 and from 1869 to 1948 what exactly was his career and what he was fond of and how the situation the circumstances in which he lived were disadvantages to a certain extent and advantages to a certain extent to him to build a career of his own now when he was young he was uh, admitted to a school now when he was admitted to a school what has happened was uh, there was an english teacher and one of those days what has happened was the inspection committee had visited the school and when the inspection committee visited the school uh, the inspector was examining every student and he had given uh, certain things and asked the spelling of certain uh, uh, words and he just made a mention that these words were written now he had asked the word the the name kettle and write the spelling on the exercise book now the inspector was just telling them to write the word but then the class teacher being an english man was telling that the spelling is this but then mahatma gandhi did not know the proper spelling so with the result remember he wrote the spelling which was wrong in spite of the fact that he was uh, uh, persuaded by his class teacher he was not willing to commit fraud there so this was one instance which you come uh, come across when he was very young when he was in the primary school itself he said i am not interested what i know i will write and i need not be induced or given tuition or persuaded by somebody to write the correct spelling and others were like writing and a teacher was just telling him look to the other man he is writing the correct spelling but he did not do this was one instance which came in the second one happened to be he was under his mother's influence now putli bhai happened to be a very religious man and most of the gandhi families happened to be paniyas paniyas are generally businessmen they were as called now putli bhai always used to go the uh, observe the sacred chaturmas during the course of the chaturmas he will not even food or eat food unless she will see the sun now there were instances wherein uh, during the rainy season because chaturmas generally take place in july and august the sun would never that because he will be always behind the cloud and these children just to please the mother they will say now mother mother the crowd has come come we'll just see but then when she go will go out to the house there was uh, no no sun it was only the cloud and with the result she will console her and saying today god doesn't want me to eat and she will sleep even without eating a food other influences are plenty because remember uh, he was taught to tell the truth right from day one and although he was taught to tell the truth right from day one at times remember he wanted to deviate from it because of the influence of others now mahatma gandhi was influenced by uh, two incidents when he was young uh, there was a, a natak company drama company and the drama company was playing the role of uh, uh, the natak of satya harishchandra and mahatma gandhi goes there and having seen satya harishchandra he was influenced by it 
he was inf infatuated by it and again uh, after days he goes there again sees for the third time fourth time fifth time and many number of times having seen the drama the role and character of satyarishchandra remember actually impacted on his mind this was one incident which is being uh, spoken by him in his autobiography then there was another story the story of uh, shravana shravana happened to be a, again a great muni and he had uh, father and mother they were rishis but they were blind and the son actually shravana was taking these blind parents to uh, a pilgrimage and he was actually putting them in a balance and taking them and remember the devotion of the great man to see that his parents naturally reach uh, nirvana or swarga was remember uh, undescribable this is what he says and he is to read this because the book was found in the house and these are the two books uh, the one is satyarishchandra story and shravana uh, the, the story of shravana uh, his attachment towards his blind parents was impacted him when he was young but then remember in a society you will always, always have good people and bad people and his uncle happened to be a chain smoker and he was a chain smoker naturally these brothers gandhi and his brothers wanted to cultivate smoking but then when they wanted to cultivate smoking there was no money and when they did not can get money what they used to do it they used to steal money from a servant's pocket now this was going on but then for three people four people it was not good enough because the money was very meager because you may be getting at that time Remember three or four rupees or five rupees in those days. Now, then they what they did was they used to the the pieces remaining pieces which are cut and thrown and now thrown out were taken for this and for joyous night because they just want to see smoke and leave the smoke outside and see the cloud coming from there. Now this money since it was not forthcoming ultimately they had to abandon this. And there was another person who was a friend of his who always used to say. See, we should become strong. In order to become strong, we should eat non-veg. And if you don't eat non-veg, you will be like a coward. You will not have any strength. And Gandhi takes it very seriously. And having taken seriously, he decides to go along with him and tries to take non-veg. And one day, both of them go and go to a hotel wherein a goat's meat was given to oh, them. and goat's meat it was just like remember he was says it was like a piece of leather and i was not able to taste anything in it and since i was not able to taste anything in it i left there and there and came back but then the next day the same man who persuaded him and they go and eat non veg when they come back home the mother was asking to take food in the house especially in the night and when the mother was requesting them to take food in the night they were saying no i am not hungry how long you can gain say like this and ultimately this person gandhi decides not to eat non veg because it was done out of ill gotten money because there was an instance which i just intend to bring home in the autobiography it is being put uh, what has happened was to eat non veg and to fight for the freedom of this country and to oust the british you should have strength and courage to have strength and courage you should have non veg on day to day basis and to eat non veg you require money but then money was not forthcoming so his elder brother had an golden armlet one day both of them take it out and afterwards go and sell it sell it in the uh, market and they get some money so it may be about 15 or 20 rupees at those time and the loan was cleared once and once for all but then to have fresh non veg he should have money and gandhi decides then no we should not but then on that day when he took out the arms let from his brothers arm and took it to the concerned person for selling of gold he felt that he was committing a sin in the name of god and he was actually violating the dictates of uh, the two uh, uh, heroes 
he cultivated Satya Harishchandra as well as Shravana Maharshi. On that day, that time his father was sick and he would come and sleep. And Mahatma Gandhi wanted to bring this fact to his father. And he writes a letter saying that this is what he had done. And at the end he says, forgive my father. It was about 8.30 or 9. The father had slept on his bed with a small bed lamp. And Mahatma Gandhi just goes and keeps this letter just by the side of the bed lamp and stands away, five feet away from the concern of his father. The father slowly and steadily with difficulty gets up and puts his specs and are afterwards, remember, starts reading the letter which was written by his own son. And as and when, remember, he started reading, pearl drops of came out and the letter was completely wet. Then he removed the specs. Having removed the specs, both of them looked at each other. And Mahatma Gandhi says, if I had a camera, this was said at a later stage, I would have clicked it. I remember my father, on the one hand, he was upset. And on the other, he was full of grief. On the other, he was very happy because here is a son who has admitted the truth and decided not to make such things. Now, this was an instance which is being remembered uh, by everybody. Now, he was for truth and he stood for truth, which I shall tell you uh, at a later stage. Now, Mahatma Gandhi got married at the age of 13. But then the betrothal ceremony would take place, remember, from five itself, from the age of five. Now the children, both the boy and the girl, may not be knowing because they are not part of the betrothal ceremony. And this ceremony is being conducted by only by the parents of the girl as well as the boy. Now in the meanwhile, before the marriage may take place, uh, the concerned girl or the boy may die. In the event of the death of a boy, remember nothing will happen, it is not inviolable. She will not become a, a widow. Marriage can take place because she was not a party to the marriage. So only the parents have come and the parents have decided to ma ma marry their son and a daughter for the purpose. Now in the case of Mahatma Gandhi, there were three occasions wherein the betrothal has taken place. And on all the three occasions, the, the concerned girl who was supposed to marry with the Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi passed away because of the conditions of the time. And he points out in the autobiography, three times the betrothal ceremony have taken place without his knowledge. He was not knowing whom he was going to marry. He was not aware of the fact with whom he is going to live and lead his company. But then with the Kasturba, the marriage took place and thereafterwards both of them started living together. Although the, they started living together, marriage would take place when they were young. And in 90% of the cases, they were not knowing for what purpose they are married. So in such situations, Mahatma Gandhi points out, in most of the instances, soon after the marriage, if it is a child marriage, the wife naturally would live with her parents. He points out, in the first five years of his life, his wife, Kasturba, must have lived with her parents for a period of three years. Only two years they lived. And at the age of 18, he completed uh, his education. And afterwards, he goes to England for his barrister at law degree. And having completed the barrister at law in England, he came back to the state of India. And when he came back to the state of India, he started practicing in this country. You know, as a practitioner, he was not a great success. And from here, when he was practicing here, he gets a brief from South Africa. And in 1893, he goes to the state of South Africa. And from South Africa, the career of Mahatma Gandhi starts. Now, when he started his career in, uh, in South Africa, the first and foremost, the type of cases which came to him happened to be the unpaid or the lower paid minor workers of India in the state of South Africa. So in a few cases, they were not paid at all, but they were employed by the British. In a few cases, the miners were employed and they were given a meager salary, a token salary. And it is here, Mahatma Gandhi, well, uh, for the first time, 
spoke about the rights of the endangered endangered labor he said laborers have rights it has to be protected and it has to be enforced before the court of law and the the movement began here from 1893 to almost 1915 it was in the uh, in the month of january or february mahatma gandhi in 1915 came back to the state of india and having come back to the state of india he started he first met his political guru and his political guru happened to be gopal krishna gokhale gopal krishna gokhale said oh, as he was getting old and he said the freedom movement has to be continued come what may because all the what we call as the militant movement uh, which was started by bal gangadhar tilak bimbin chandrapal and the other person lal bal and pal uh, all of them uh, are dead now because the tilak's movement was 1955 to 1915 was there and uh, they were not in a position to carry on because all of them were passed away and at that time what we call is this moderate movement which was led by gopal krishna gokhale had to be continued and he says gandhi is the first the, the best person to continue the freedom movement in this country so in 1916 gopal krishna gokhale passed away and in 1916 when he passed away naturally the the role of fighting for the independence and the freedom movement of the country fell on the head and hands of mahatma gandhi and afterwards he has never looked back from 19 remember 16 to 1948 and 1947 we got independence and he survived for one year four months at a later stage now till then the mahatma survived and he was known for his various statements various activities and principles which were practiced by him all through all his life now during the course of the freedom movement as a moderator he was persuading the british government enough is enough it is time for you to quit and mahatma gandhi happened to be a practical man unlike uh, a few of the his predecessors and as a practical man he always used to go and speak to the british and convince them what is being done by them it cannot be appreciated by anybody and in order to be appreciated these are the things which are to be done and he opposed the policies of the british government which were adopted by the governor generals of the time and there are words you may be knowing we come to the year 1930 i don't wish to speak about the freedom movement as it is uh, not required to be spoken we are speaking only on gandhi in 1952 the crisp mission came and the crisp mission uh, decided to give independence to this country as part of the as part of the crisp mission mahatma gandhi was asked to go to the state of england for the round table conference and in the round table conference when the discussions were taking place most of the british secretaries and the british parliamentarians were speaking hi one after another using their english language and at that time at the end mahatma gandhi stood up and said see india is a poor country and for a poor country these hyperbolic words are not going to give any satisfactory answer then he just removed a shawl remember which was put on and he showed this is exactly what india is no baron people are poor and remember they don't have don't have hands to mouth existence so try to give a solution and hand over the freedom to us and we'll be in a position to manage all these things lasted and ultimately on 14th uh, uh, night we got independence and india became independence on 15th august 1947 now you might be knowing when india got independence and when the celebration was going on at the uh, uh, what we call as the red fort in delhi all of them all of them were present and a beautiful podium and a stage was built and in this podium most of the freedom fighters were were enjoying part taking part mics were kept and singing of bhajans were going on everyone was present but then the greatest of them all was not present 
Mahatma Gandhi on 15th of August 1947, when the celebration was in the Independence Day celebration was celebrated, he was not present in the uh, amongst the audience or in the stage. And many people were surprised. What type of activity is this Mahatma Gandhi who fought for the country, won independence for us, and the man who fought for the independence of the country is not seen. Then investigation began. Where is Mahatma Gandhi? Mahatma Gandhi, soon after, remember, we were about to get independence, goes in a train to Calcutta. And having gone to Calcutta, he was consoling a poor family by living with them. And he was just telling, remember, ultimately what is important is family life is very much essential. And poverty must be put an end. And this was what he was telling to the family. Now, Mahatma Gandhi, when he was in the Bengal family, when press reporters went and asked him, he just tells, I had and I have two dreams in this country. The first one is liberate India from the British. And in the liberation of India from British, we have succeeded and the task is being done. The second, the second objective is more important than the first. Liberation from, of Indians from poverty, from inequity, from injustice, from suppression, from oppression, and from inequality. And that is most important for us. We have one independence, but then the country is poor. Principles of inequity, inequality, injustice, oppression, and suppression that prevail in this country must be put to an end, come what may, once and once for all. Now, in this endeavor, Mahatma Gandhi said, in my India, every citizen of this country will have a share to raise his voice in the development of this country. And there will be no rich class and poor class in this country. All, whether they are rich or the poor, should live in perfect harmony was the message that was sent by Mahatma Gandhi. Now, this is what is India, the India of his dreams. But then, Although we speak about all these dreams and other things, we just intend to know what exactly are his contributions, contributions which is being made to the state of India. Now, when we speak about the contribution that is being made uh, to this country, first thing is he opposed, remember, casteism. Casteism should be put to an end, come what may. This was one of the major the planks for which Mahatma fought for till the end of time. And this, remember, creation of uh, what we call as casteism is injustice to the people. If we are all children of God, why there is discrimination? Whether the God discriminated between the rich and the poor? This is the way he, being, uh, he asked the question to the public. Casteism should come to an end, it should be put to an end, if by legislation uh, as well. This was one of the ways. The second one is, remember he was just uh, thinking of the scheduled caste and scheduled uh, stripes. He was, remember, telling them these are the poorest poor other people. And they are not even allowed to the place of worship, that is the greatest sin. If the place of worship or places of worship is allowed to everybody, why they should be discriminated in not allowing them? That is where, remember, he went to give them a title, Harijans. And according to him, him, the message of the Gita is to treat all the Harijans as well as the Brahmins equally. That was the message which was sent by Mahatma Gandhi when we spoke about the principle of equality and in improving the lots of Harijans. And this is very much essential. Further, there are scholars when they write about Mahatma Gandhi, they would go to the extent of speaking about the, the Bhagavad Gita as well. And if you just remember chapter 18 of the Bhagavad Gita, and in chapter 18 of the Bhagavad Gita, you have two shlokas, one is 41 and 42. Now, it says, Janmane Jayate Shudra. By birth, everyone is a Shudra. Then, Remember, he becomes a Dija, a great man, by his effort, by his karma, by his deeds. 
and this is what is required for us all of us and no discrimination no casteism and is shown was the message which was sent by mahatma gandhi then discriminations against harijans is intolerable then they have what we call as untouchability which cannot be accepted come what may and that is why when he was in south africa itself he started the, uh, the famous magazine with the newspaper or magazine which used to get circulated even in india during the course of the freedom struggle which was called as uh, uh, one is harijan now in this he used to speak about uplifting them pleading before the freedom fighters of this country how we can bring them on par with others and if you ill treat them remember country has uh, no chance of becoming an independent democratic and a sovereign country this has to be put an end then he was the one who opposed he spoke of prohibition now in order to uplift the uh, the scheduled caste and the scheduled tribes or what we call the harijans prohibition is very much essential and only if you introduce provision uh, prohibition and stop supplying the drinks through the market their lot will come improve and when once the lot will improve naturally they will send their children to schools education is uh, very much essential and it should be given on priority now the, the other one happened to be the concept of swaraj he was the one who spoke about the concept of swaraj now what exactly you mean by the concept of swaraj now swaraj remember many people think that is independence no it begins with the independence and many people never speak beyond thereafter after independence now when swaraj is given the government of the day and the government of the day which controls the administration through of its followers may abuse power the real swaraj comes in wherein when a few of the people who run the government usurp power and try to uh, become dictators that should be opposition to it that is real swaraj we should oppose to the name this is what hugo grotius has pointed out hugo grotius remember in his uh, uh, early writings went to the extent of pointing out the king should do no wrong and if the king as a ruler when authority is given to him abuses the power the people of the country have the right to dethrone the king this is what in the concept of swaraj mahatma gandhi speaks the, the the administration which is being run by a few swallows usurp power and decides everything for themselves has to be opposed and their tyranny should be stopped and only then what we call as the uh, the the uh, real swaraj will come in then the other important aspect he was the one who spoke about the trusteeship theory of property when i speak about the trusteeship theory of property remember uh, gandhi and trade union movement now he was just speaking now in whether it is an establishment or an industry the workers ultimately are the trustees of the trust which is being established for them of course there will be a owner but the owner should enjoy the property in favor of the trust and this trust includes the workers that is what what we call as the trusteeship theory of property so naturally remember there is no such thing as the owner's property everything is for the welfare of the workers and we service the welfare of the people of the country that is what he was envisaging in his trusteeship theory of property then he was speaking about the spinning wheel now spinning wheel well, he has written so many pages both in harijan and in eng indian which was coming from south africa now spinning wheel naturally represented the hungry masses of the society now they it represented the hungry people or the poor people of the society because when they don't have any employment naturally they will work with the spinning wheel and by working in the spin, spinning wheel time and again they would earn some money so that they will be in a position to carry on their life and this is very much essential 
Gandhi was not opposed to what we call as, remember, use of uh, 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 the modernization. He was for modernization, true. Now he points out in one instance, I just intend to quote him. Now if the, well, if the society in India we are in a position to serve everything, everything what is being required for the people of country with the use of 30,000, it is fine. But then the remaining 30 crores should not keep quiet. And the remaining 30 crores, remember, there are no right to spend idle hours without any work. And that is where, remember, spinning wheel is very much essential. And a spinning wheel should be in a position to help them and help them to prepare clothes and to sell it in the market and to earn a reward, reward or reward, whatever remuneration for this purpose. This is what he pointed out in this way. Now, idle, uh, remaining idle hours is opposed by Mahatma Gandhi, come what may. Then he was the one who spoke about non-violence. Non-violence, remember, is the greatest, uh, 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 what we call is, achievement which the Mahatma Gandhi has contributed to this movement. He used to always he used to say, non-violence is the first article of my faith. And it is the last article of my creed. It is the first article of my, my faith and it is the last article of my creed. Non-violence, remember, is my religion. And ahimsa is the way of its realization. And he used to always say, no, truth is, remember, my religion, Ahimsa, is the way of its realization. These are all the statements which are being made by him. Now, one instance I just wanted to tell you, uh, which uh, is from uh, his life. Now, when uh, independent movement was going on, and uh, during the course of the independent movement, he had an opportunity to visit South Africa again. And when he visited South Africa again, remember his uh, uh, brother's children were in South Africa at that time. And they were in Cape Town. And when he went there, there was a meeting which was to be held in Pretoria. Now, between Pretoria and Cape Town, the distance was about 22 kilometers, uh, 22 miles at that time. Now, the G brother of uh, Gandhi's children they just said, Uncle, we will go in a car because he had a car. And remember, both of them, because he was Gandhi was supposed to address the meeting in Pretoria. And they went in the car. Having gone in the car, the concerned person, that is his cousin, he, he dropped Mahatma Gandhi in Pretoria. And afterwards, he said, I have some minor repairs. I will take the car to the garage. Now, he has taken the car to the garage immediately. Uh, there afterwards he disappeared. Mahatma Gandhi finished his work, he finished his speech and I tried to contact this person, his relationship to go back to Cape Town. At that time, he was not able to trace him, nor able to find him. Now later what has happened was, he came to know that this person, soon after leaving the car, went to a theatre and he was watching a picture. And after watching the picture, he came with the car and um, tells him, uh, Uncle, there was a delay and a garage fellow did not repair it and gave it now. But then Mahatma Gandhi knew he was telling a lie. And when he told the lie, he did not utter a word. And then he said, you drive the car, I will follow you. Remember, 22 miles Mahatma Gandhi did not get into the car at that time. And he just followed him. He imposed a penalty on himself. This is the theory of non-violence. This is at a later stage. Remember, such was, he did not ask him for anything. And for his life, he was imposing a, a penalty on himself. And when they reached there, it was early hours of morning. He said, you go, I will not come. I will come only by walk. I don't want to get into your car at all. That was... Remember, one of the incidents which is being reported in one of the newspapers of South Africa very recently. There afterwards, remember, uh, the other important thing that is being uh, is he opposed industrialization. Mahatma Gandhi opposed industrialization for the simple reason it will lead to concentration of powers 
and wealth in a few and when it leads to concentration of powers and wealth in a few naturally remember the society will not function properly and for its proper functioning the concentration of power should not be allowed that is where he was telling about sarvodaya movement when a sarvodaya movement simply means remember everyone uh, what we call as the greatest happiness to the greatest number gandhi was the champion of sarvodaya movement later it was championed by acharya vinoba bhave so everyone the greatest happiness to the greatest number everyone should get his share and in his in the, in the india of his dreams there will be no rich class and no poor class everyone should live in perfect harmony that is what mahatma gandhi has pointed out in the, this now there afterwards when we uh, uh, go further he suppose he is the one who supported for cottage industries so he was saying cottage industries are very much essential no at that time foreign exchange and other things what we call in economics were not relevant nor it was in vogue and states only used to practice now in those days he was speaking about the cottage industries now having said this much i just intend to come to the other remaining part now what people have said about the great man now when i speak about the 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 comments which are being made, made by great men one of them happened to be einstein einstein being a scientist having read about gandhi having known the movement of gandhi went to the extent of finding out the moral grandeur of the man was so great and centuries hence people will rarely believe that such a person had walked on the surface of the earth with such skeleton with bones that was one of the statements which came from uh, einstein if einstein had said like this what did our rabindranath tagore had pointed out rabindranath tagore has said with the gandhi's entry and emergence into the freedom movement india blossomed to great heights this was what he said now there was another uh, great uh, 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 nobel writer and this nobel writer went to the extent of pointing out it was mahatma gandhi who introduced remember religion into politics for the poor uh, 200 years so he was the one who introduced religion into politics for the 200 years and he was known about romain roland romain roland happened to be a french writer and this french writer remember had won the nobel prize as well as i pointed out and in his writings he was the one he points out mahatma gandhi is the only one man who introduced religion into politics with the ethical content and this has helped remember for the growth of civilization in modern times now mahatma gandhi once asked was asked to speak about charlie chaplin now he said i have not seen charlie chaplin yet but once charlie chaplin had met having met mahatma gandhi he went to the extent of uh, uh, you are getting the great influence from him now during the course of dis discussion between charlie chaplin and the great mahatma they had discussed about the influence of uh, machine on man what type of influence the machine is going to bring on man and this discussion was actually influenced the great charlie chaplin to produce a movie and the movie is modern times now that is how he was influenced by it now there was another famous person but but not sure and this person happened to be a lawyer he never remember praised anybody but after meeting mahatma gandhi when he came out this, the press people just asked him asked him what exactly your opinion of the great man then he just smiled and he said it is the experience of seeing himalayas because to that great height nobody can venture to reach that was the expression which was given by the great man now what exactly are the qualities in him professor will and ariel durand Uh, after writing the story of civilization in 10 volumes who now writes an epilog 
and this epilogue is again a book which is called as lessons of history and in the lessons of history he speaks about what we call as one is mahatma gandhi had one quality remarkable disinterestedness remarkable disinterestedness was one of the qualities then remember the other important thing is humility humility remember which was inherent then simplicity of the soul i just pointed out to when he went to the crisp mission he just opened his shawl and showed his chest simplicity of the soul disinterestedness then captivating humility then the moral grandeur of his soul morally mahatma gandhi was so strong these are the four or five characters which are being spoken further will and daniel durand points out yes this man had come onto the scene but then years after people will rarely think about the other great statesmen who have appeared in the scene except the great mahatma because of the contribution which he has made to human posterity now one important thing which i just intend to speak here is mahatma gandhi was always influenced by the state of united states and influenced by the state of united states for the simple reason because of the human rights uh, awareness which the americans had when he was in the state of he points out it is what we call as the karmic bond between the americans and the indians when he was in south africa trying to protect human rights and having faced the onslaught of the british in south africa there were two americans who be friended with him i am telling the story of 1894 to 2000 and these two americans not only be friended with him they protected him and at times they protected gave protection of food sakar everything and that is where he remembers them in their writing in his writings now in 1922 in the state of united states especially in new york a great church father john homes he was delivering a lecture soon after the sunday prayer in a parish priest in a church and in the lecture which he was delivering sir john homes points out john haynes homes he was pointing out the greatest man today is mahatma gandhi the greatest man today is mahatma gandhi he is he is equivalent to the great jesus and this statement was made remember in 1922 at that time mahatma gandhi was not known to many people although he was not known to many people his fame had spread far and wide at least amongst the literate people now other thing is he was influenced by david thoreau he was influenced by the writings of david thoreau again an american writer because he was the one he was speaking about the civil liberties and the civil liberty movement which was started by him was actually helping to fight the rights of the people the oppressed people the suppressed people in this country and that has enormously helped him mahatma gandhi in his harijan as well as young india has quoted several versions of david thoreau Now the other person happened to be uh, Vincent Sheehan. Now Vincent Sheehan happened to be a great man who came in to con- came in contact with Mahatma Gandhi just three days before his assassination. Now they had a wonderful discussion, and after the wonder- wonderful discussion, remember he wanted to see the great Mahatma the next day. And having seen the great Mahatma the next day. he said i am your follower and he instantly became his follower now the other uh, the, the perhaps the last one happened to be a, a lady a lady of the life magazine she happened to be the editor of the life magazine her name was uh, mrs margaret white margaret white took an appointment on the early hours uh, 30 1948 now on this day that is afternoon he was assassinated morning she meets him and having met him they had a discussion on several subjects yet one stage she puts a question to the great mahatma on his principles of non violence now the the question was very simple 
dear karamchand will you insist on your theory of non violence when death is spread death is spread on one of your cities through a nuclear attack so if one person brings in a nuclear weapon and drops into your city and kills eliminates all of them at one go will you still speak about the non violence mahatma gandhi looked at the lady and said if the defense people if the defenseless people are attacked under non violence these defenseless people will join together and ultimately pray for the soul of the man who attacked and spread death to the city through a nuclear weapon that was the last sentence and that was the sentence which spoke about the theory of non violence when we speak about this remember you may be knowing the mahatma gandhi was tried and in the gujarat trial when he came the high court they said all the judges stood up and respected him this is this was a, a trial on sedition although he was condemned to prison imprisonment they they had the greatest respect for for this now one important thing which i just wanted to speak to you happened to be about his uh, the the truth and non violence now when i speak about truth he said god is truth and god is love god is ethics god is morality god is fearlessness and god is the source of life and light god is god is the doubter of the doubt this was the message which was given by mahatma gandhi that is what i said truth is my religion and ahimsa is the way of its realization now lot of things are being spoken edward thompson a great historian of the 20th century a british historian of the 20th century when he spoke of mahatma gandhi he said mahatma gandhi was a super judge of men remember other thinkers other thinkers from the world history two of them he makes a mention one is happened to be socrates and other one happened to be jesus both of them were killed like mahatma gandhi now when we speak of mahatma gandhi on this stage he, the contributions which he has made and contribution which are likely to be remembered by posterity only one thing is being said by louis fisher his love of the country was as pure as the sun rays and as sacred as the water of ganges his love of the country was as pure as the sun rays and as sacred as the water of ganges he was a dharmatma he was a karmatma he was a satyatma he was a tyagatma he was a snehatma and to crown all this he was a mahatma that is the only thing which we can say on this day thank you very much